boys and girls. I'm back again to read you another book, and this week I have another Patricia Polacco book. This one is called For the Love of Autumn, and Autumn is this little kitty cat. How many of you like cats? I prefer dogs, but this is a cute story about a kitty cat. Okay, For the Love of Autumn. When Danielle saw Autumn for the very first time, she held that tiny kitten in the palm of her hand. She marveled at how perfect and small that creature was. Danielle named her Autumn because it was almost Halloween. It was love at first sight. A cute little kitty cat. Poor little thing, you look like you haven't eaten for quite a while, Danielle said as she gave her warm milk and a bit of food. Then Danielle made a special little bed for her to sleep in. She set out water and kibble and a litter box. Danielle looked forward to coming home so that she could hold and pet Autumn. As each day passed, she loved that little kitten more and more. Soon Autumn was scurrying around the apartment. She tipped over the trash, pulled the laundry out of the hamper, knocked all the pencils and papers off the desk, and jumped out at Danielle's ankles as she walked by. Danielle was a student teacher. When she came home from school and tried to correct the students' papers, Autumn would lie right in the middle of them. After dinner, Danielle would pop corn, and they'd sit on the sofa together and watch TV at bedtime. Autumn would curl up in Danielle's arms and purr and purr and purr until they both drifted off to sleep. One day, as Danielle opened her mail, she squealed with delight, Oh, Autumn, I got a teaching job. It's in Port Towson, Washington. I've always wanted to live by the sea, and Port Towson is right by the sea. When Danielle packed for the move, Autumn hid in the packaging boxes. She wrestled with the packing shreds and pounced on the bubble wrap, popping as she landed on it. Danielle and Autumn drove together all the way up the coast of California through Oregon and into the state of Washington. Finally, as they came over the crest of a tall hill, there it was, the beautiful little village right next to the sea. The school had arranged for Danielle to rent a lovely cottage right on the bay. An enchanted cottage, she thought when she saw it. Autumn loved her new little house. The very first thing she did was disappear right up the chimney. When the kitten finally came down, she was covered with soot and ash. Autumn helped Danielle unpack. She got inside every paper bag that hit the floor, jumped into every box that was empty, and almost knocked over a stack of Danielle's favorite china. That first evening, Autumn and Danielle sat on her sofa eating popcorn and looking out the window at the sea as a warm fire crackled in the fireplace. They were getting settled in. She doesn't sound like too much of a help. Here she is with her students. Danielle loved her new school and adored each and every one of her students. Miss Parks, they asked her one day, are you married? No, not yet, but someday, when just the right man comes along, I will be. How will you know he's the one? One of the children asked. I'll hear the sound of thunder, smell jasmine, and the wind will blow his hair. I'll know that he's exactly the one. Oh, Miss Parks, do you think he's out there somewhere? Little Mary Proctor asked. Indeed I do. I can just feel it, Miss Parks answered wistfully. Remember that. She'll hear thunder and smell jasmine. There's the kitty in the garden. Yes, Danielle Parks loved her students, and she loved her little cottage almost as much. She planted a cottage garden. She pulled weeds and fertilized the lawn and trimmed the hedges. She even painted the wonderful old trellis. As for Autumn, she loved the place. She raced about the garden, stalked butterflies in the flower beds, climbed the apple trees, and even perched herself 
atop the trellis so she could watch the birds in the new bird bath. Both of them settled into their new life in that little cottage by the sea. So she would perch up here on top of the trellis so she could watch the birds in the bird bath. One afternoon when Danielle got home from school, a terrible storm was raging and there was thunder. The sky was black and the raindrops big as bumblebees hit the roof with a pinging sound. Autumn didn't greet Danielle at the door like she always did and Danielle searched the house but couldn't find Autumn anywhere. She called her next door neighbor to see if they had seen her. Oh, she's probably hiding out somewhere with this fierce storm, her neighbor reassured her, but Danielle was worried. Late that night, Danielle heard a scratching sound at the door. She opened it, and there was Autumn. Oh, no. She was soaking wet, and her tail had a huge gash in it and was bleeding. Danielle reached for her, but Autumn shrank away and ran into the night. Danielle ran after her. She walked around the neighborhood in the driving rain, calling, Autumn, Autumn, but Autumn didn't come. She had completely disappeared. Oh, dear. When Danielle left for school the next morning, she left the back door ajar, hoping that Autumn would come home. All that day at school, her students noticed that something was wrong. Miss Parks, where do you think Autumn could be? Jamie Ross asked after Danielle told the class why she was so worried. I think all of us should come to Miss Parks after school today and look for Autumn, Jan Jerome Bolton announced. Caleb D Dirk stepped in. Yep. Some of us can take the beach, and you guys can look in the woods and the hill, and you girls stop at every house to see if anybody has seen her. The children were true to their word, and they all came to Miss Park's cottage. They launched a search that would shame the FBI, but there was no autumn to be found, so all our students helped search for the kitten, but they couldn't find her. Days stretched into weeks, and Danielle cried almost every night just thinking of autumn. There had been rumors that a mountain lion had been seen and her cottage was very near the state park where one had been sighted. Danielle feared the worst. She walked around the little cottage and cried whenever she looked at anything that was Autumn's. She picked up Autumn's empty little bed and ran her hands over it. She looked at Autumn's paw prints still on the windowsill and she didn't eat popcorn anymore nor sit and watch the sea by the fire. Danielle's heart was broken. She was afraid that she'd lost her kitten forever. Finally, Danielle put away Autumn's food and water bowls, and she took all her toys and put them in a bin by the laundry room. But she couldn't bear to put her bed away. She couldn't bear to brush Autumn's fur off her sofa cushions. Danielle ached from the loss of the heartbeat of her little cottage because to her, that's what Autumn was. She was afraid. She had lost her kitten. Uh-oh. On Saturday, Danielle and her students planted a small bed of flowers where Autumn used to lay in the shade of the apple tree. And the children polished rocks and placed them in a circle on the ground. They were making like a little memorial. We'll always call this Autumn's garden, Benny Barber whispered softly. I think she would have loved that, Miss Parks said. Just then... As the children were about to leave, there was a small sound, and something jumped off the trellis into Miss Park's arms. It was Autumn. Autumn, Danielle cried as she hugged her. Where have you been? The children surrounded them and gave her a group hug. You have been gone for six whole weeks. Wow, she was gone a long time. But Miss Parks, she doesn't look like she's been in the woods. Look, her fur is shiny and clean. And she looks nice and healthy, Benny said. And look at her tail. There was a horrible gash on it the night she ran off. And look, it's been shaved and there's stitches in it. Someone's taken care of her. So somebody was taking care of the kitty cat. Autumn stuck close to home for the next week until one day she was off again, only to return the following weekend wearing a flea collar. Hmm, somebody else is taking care of her. Well, for goodness sake, who put this flea collar on you, Danielle wondered as she took it off. I have a flea collar for you, sweetie. Pink, your favorite color. And she put one on. 
Then one day, Autumn went away again and came back two days later with a phone number scrawled on the collar. Children, Danielle announced in class that morning, someone has put their phone number on my cat's collar. Wow, they exclaimed. We have a real mystery on our hands, Johnny Carter said, and he thought for a minute, someone must think that Autumn is their cat. So when Autumn ran away in the storm, someone else was taking care of the cat, and they must have thought, this cat's a runaway, and they started taking care of it. Well, she's my cat, said Danielle. Miss Parks, you have to call that number, and you have to tell the person she's your cat, Benny Barber insisted. That evening, Danielle paced the floor, and she wasn't accustomed to calling someone who she had never seen before. But Autumn circled the phone and kept looking up at her as if she wanted her to call. Well, here goes, Danielle said as she dialed the number. There she is on the phone. A voice answered, yes. Uh, well, my cat seems to have your phone number on it. Uh, thank God you found Stormy, the voice on the other end said. So that person named the cat Stormy. <laughs> Stormy? Her name isn't Stormy, her name is Autumn, Danielle said. Oh no, I named her Stormy because she came to my house on a terrible stormy night, badly injured. Her tail had been slashed, probably a mountain lion. No, sir, you just don't understand. I've had Autumn since she was a kitten. She disappeared on a stormy night from my home. She's my cat. Well, if she's so precious to you, then why was she out on a terrible storm? Danielle quickly hung up. What nerve, she shouted. What a rude man. When she told her class about the phone call, they were intrigued. They spent the whole afternoon draw doing drawings of what they imagined the rude man to look like. That afternoon, Autumn came into the house with a note attached to the collar. When Danielle opened it, it simply said, please accept my apologies. I didn't mean to be rude. So they were kind of upset with each other because they each thought the cat was theirs. He thought he rescued the cat on a stormy night and she had raised the cat since it was a kitten. Danielle quickly sat down and wrote a note back. I apologize as well, perhaps I was rude too. And she attached the note to Autumn's collar and sent her out the door. Two afternoons later, Autumn came back with another note. Since we both care so deeply for this little kitten, perhaps we can share her. I live alone and truly love her company. Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen. When Danielle shared the most recent note with her class, all of them decided that she needed to invite the note, note writer over to her house so she could meet him. Oh, children, I'm not in the habit of inviting a perfect stranger to my home, but Miss Parks, he's obviously a lonely old man, and he can't be bad a bad person if he helped Autumn, could he? Benny Barber said. All right, then, I'm going to ask him to stop by this Saturday, she said. Oh, can we come to her and the entire class pleaded? We want to meet him. Miss Parks agreed, and all that afternoon the children helped her compose the invitations. Can you imagine your whole class going to your teacher's house to meet this stranger who rescued the cat? <laughs> And there they are, peeking out the window of her house as this man comes. Saturday was a dark and rainy day, but every kid in Danielle's class was at her house by early afternoon. All of them had their faces pasted to the front window to see what it would be like when he came to the door. Every time a car drove up, the children would shriek with delight, only to sigh when the car passed. Finally, just when it looked like what he wasn't really coming, and they had turned away, there was a knock on the door. Autumn ran to the door. As Miss Parks opened it, there was a clap of thunder. The wind came up and blew the trellis so that the jasmine vine unraveled and a clump of it fell into his hands. And then another gust blew his hair into his eyes. Remember what she had said about the man she was gonna marry? There was gonna be thunder and the smell of jasmine. Miss Parks, I'm Stephen Norton. I think we share a wonderful little cat. Autumn sprang into his arms and purred and purred and purred and Danielle beamed as she gazed into his face. This little cat is the heartbeat of my house, Miss 
Dr. Norton said softly as he caressed Autumn. A clap of thunder echoed over the bay and the wind caught the jasmine line and scattered blossoms everywhere. Why her sudden, why her students whispered to one another, oh, Miss Parks has found the very one. <laughs> and Autumn had found them both. The kitty cat brought them together. Stephen Norton and Danielle Parks were married that next spring, and they shared not only the enchanted cottage, but the sea, but walks by the beach, evenings by the fire, eating popcorn, and most of all, their love of autumn. The kitty cat brought them together. That was a happy ending, wasn't it? That was a cute little story, I thought, about the kitty cat and a teacher and two people sharing the love of a kitty cat, and fortunately, they were able to share the kitty cat, and we had a happy ending. I liked that story. It was very, very long, wasn't it? <laughs> and so I'm going to say goodbye because this is the longest video we've had, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.